I recently read about Trinity Chapel in an old journal of Derbyshire Archaeological and Natural History Society publication. This piqued my interest and off on a ramble I did go. I followed an old Roman or medieval track upwards and admired the views of Oxton Reservoir and the Amber Valley. Finally approaching a spring which is mentioned in a periodical as a healing spring. At the court of Windsor, the 9th day of March, 1865, the Queen's Most Excellent Majesty in Council was pleased to approve a scheme for making better provision for the cure of souls in the new parish of the Holy Trinity, Brackenfield, in the county of Derby and in the Diocese of Lichfield. With this in mind, this chapel is ideally located, especially considering the settlement patterns and communication networks. This is Trinity Chapel, which is mentioned in the Doomsday Book of 1086 and is referenced in the 13th century charter of Dali Abbey. The Dali Abbey document records a route known as T- Churchgate leading to the chapel. Over the years, the chapel fell into ruins, and it wasn't until Henry VIII, Sergeant at Arms, Hugh Willingby, rebuilt the chapel in memorial to his wife Margaret. Margaret died in 1511, and this death breathed new life into the chapel once again. Whilst the chapel had no burial rites, it said there is actually one person buried in the grounds, and that is of a nameless stranger found dead by the wayside nearby. The only wedding record of a chapel is on December 1669, by special license at Trinity Chapel between Samuel Wheatcroft of Ashover and Anne Chadwick of Worksworth. Local law claims parliamentary forces of Oliver Cromwell melted down the two chapel bells for making of shot during the Civil War. With photography becoming increasingly popular, I was happy to discover a photograph of how it looked back internally and externally and what a contrast it is. Looking through the old church records and periodicals, I was able to find descriptions and the best description I like to share here is from the reliquary an illustrated archaeologist, 1869. This periodical has a full description with drawings and photographs. A few observations respecting this ancient edifice may perhaps interest the readers of the reliquary. Its situation is peculiar and striking. It stands in a lonely enclosure, overgrown with bracken and gorse bushes. The view from this point is extensive, with no less than 16 churches being clearly to be discerned from it. Hardwick Hall, Bolsover Castle, and Wingfield Manor also form conspicuous features in the scene, which extends to the woods of Ansley and to Sherwood Forest. The chapel is literally built into the side of the hill, which must have been excavated for the purpose. It is a parallelogram, 45 feet by 21, externally, with a south porch and bell turret on the west gable, which appears to be older than the rest and exhibits Norman features. The whole is built in excellent ashlar masonry of the gritstone of the neighbourhood and roofed with heavy stone slates. The chancel, 10 feet, long by 16 wide, is not marked externally, but internally, it is divided from the nave by a root screen of open tracery the spandrels of the central doorway being ornamented with two shields. The nave, 29 feet, 6 in, by 16 feet, it is fitted with rude oak benches, perfectly plain. 
except one, the end of which is decorated with an incised carved shield suspended from a hand. The cross on the east gable is modern, as are also the font, pulpit and reading desk, which latter is quite unworthy of the place. The porch is quite plain, with a square-headed doorway, and is fitted up with stone seats on both sides. The chapel has been disused since the year 1857, at which time a new church, more conveniently situated in the valley below, was consecrated. In connection with this chapel, it may be worthwhile to mention two peculiar customs I have read about which prevailed there. One such custom was all women sat on the north side of the chapel and the men on the south, except in the chancel where that distinction did not prevail. The second custom was the music for the services in the chapel. This was provided by parishioners who play the cello and the violin under the direction of a village schoolmaster and one of the favourite anthems sung by the choir was How Beautiful Upon the Mountains. Are the steps of those who walk in peace How beautiful upon the mountain Are the steps of those who walk in peace Are the steps of those who walk in peace On Trinity Sunday the people used to flock in great numbers to the spot, and not only was the chapel crowded, but the hillside as well, so that it almost presented the appearance of a fair. The root screen, which was rescued along with a font, is located in a Brackenfield church. But now, O touring fabric, thy mission high is past. The door is closed, and round thee a solemn gloom is cast. This is a poem written by M. A. Bryan towards the end of the 19th century about the closure of this little trinity chapel. More information about the chapel can be found in the essay which I recently wrote. This essay can be found on my Academia page. Here is a link. Please enjoy the chapel responsibly and remember this was a place of worship. So please take all your litter home. The music is by Tom Paxton.